Congrats, congrats, you look great. Live TV is usually a blast, right? I mean, who doesn't love a good and wholesome watch? But every now and then, someone pulls a move so utterly ridiculous that it makes you stop and think, what were they even thinking? Today, let's look at embarrassing fails shown on live TV. Number one, Justin Trudeau. Sometimes you're doing something out of goodwill and it snaps back at you. In February 2018, Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau took a family trip to India, which quickly turned into a bit of a fashion fiasco. Upon their arrival, Trudeau and his family were dressed in traditional Indian outfits. While some people thought they were embracing the local culture, Others saw their clothing as stereotypical or even offensive, comparing them to Bollywood costumes. The awkwardness didn't stop there. Trudeau also tried his hand at Bangra dancing. Although he was full of enthusiasm, his moves were criticized for reinforcing Bollywood stereotypes. Many felt he was trying too hard to fit in, and his attempts at cultural appreciation backfired, making the trip memorable for all the wrong reasons. Well. You can't really make everyone happy, can you? But one thing's for sure, I was embarrassed on his behalf. Number two, George W. Bush. It's one thing doing something embarrassing on TV as a normal human being, and another being a politician and embarrassing yourself because you know you will become a meme. This happened back in 2005. However, it remained one of the funniest and most embarrassing moments for the former president of the United States. During a press conference in Beijing, George W. Bush, feeling the effects of jet lag, was fielding questions from American reporters. And when he faced a question he didn't want to answer, something really funny happened. Deciding it was time to wrap up, Bush confidently walked to the door to make his exit, only to find it was locked. Cameras captured the awkward moment as he struggled with the door, trying to figure out how to get out. Instead of getting flustered, he laughed it off and made a light-hearted joke. And after a while, an aide came to the rescue and pointed him to the correct door, turning an uncomfortable situation into a memorable, funny moment. Number three, Roy Moore. In Sacha Baron Cohen's show, Who is America? Roy Moore found himself in a tricky situation. Cohen, known for his provocative humor, tried to catch Moore off guard with pedophile jokes, which Moore didn't really take well. And how could he? After all, he's been accused of the same actions several times. I mean, being called out on live TV can be embarrassing, but can you blame others for talking about things you might have done? Not to mention, Moore actually tried to file a $95 million defamation lawsuit against Sasha after this interview, but was rejected by the court. Number four, Justin Bieber. Nah. Well, Mr. Justin is always doing one thing or another that makes us go like, darling, are you okay? Justin Bieber had an embarrassing moment during a live performance in Phoenix. It was reported that before going on stage, he drank milk, which didn't sit well with him. And he vomited on stage in front of his fans. Number five, Gary Johnson. Libertarian Party nominee Gary Johnson ran in the 2012 and 2016 presidential elections. However, his 2016 campaign is particularly remembered for a major blunder. On September 8, 2016, during an MSNBC interview, Johnson was asked how he would handle the situation in Aleppo. His response was a blank, what is Aleppo? This prompted interviewer Mike Barnacle to clarify that Aleppo is in Syria, highlighting Johnson's surprising lack of knowledge. The incident was widely embarrassing and made headlines for all the right reasons. Adding to the embarrassment shortly afterwards, Johnson stuck out his tongue during another MSNBC interview leaving many viewers and media outlets puzzled about his behavior. Number six, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise has never been one to shy away from controversy, but his interview with Matt Lauer on the Today Show really took things to another level. Instead of focusing on promoting his latest film, War of the Worlds, Cruise launched into a heated rant about psychiatry, a field he dismissed entirely as pseudoscience. His comments were not only off base, but also deeply offensive to many. Cruise took aim at the entire field of psychiatry, claiming it was fraudulent and unscientific. He specifically criticized actress Brooke Shields for using antidepressants to manage her postpartum depression, suggesting that there is no such thing as a chemical imbalance in the brain. I mean, how dumb can you be? His claims were not just controversial, they were seen as dangerous, especially given the platform he was using to spread these views. The backlash was swift and severe.
severe, as it should be. Mental health professionals and advocates were outraged, pointing out that Cruz's comments could deter people from seeking necessary help. The American Psychological Association even felt compelled to issue a statement, correcting Cruz's misinformation and emphasizing the legitimacy and importance of psychiatric treatment. Number seven, Tony Abbott. Okay, this one is not as serious as the others, but surely it is a bit funny. In August 2013, Australia's Liberal Party leader, Tony Abbott, made a memorable verbal slip during a party event. He intended to say repository, meaning a place where things are stored safely, but instead he said suppository, which refers to a medicated substance inserted into the body. The audience couldn't help but giggle at the unintended and somewhat awkward use of the word. Despite this gaffe, Abbott was elected Prime Minister of Australia just a month later. Number eight, Donald Trump. Well, you know something is coming up when you hear the name Donald Trump. After Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico in 2017, President Donald Trump made a visit to the island. During his visit, he tossed paper towels into a crowd of hurricane survivors and relief workers. And yes, the critics viewed this action as disrespectful, interpreting it as Trump. Treating the serious relief effort in defense of his actions, Trump said that the crowd was enjoying themselves and specifically asked for the towels. But come on, man! Many found his behavior inappropriate, given the gravity of the situation and the need for compassionate leadership during a national disaster. Number 9. Sarah Palin, 2008 During the 2008 presidential race, Sarah Palin, the vice presidential nominee, faced a disastrous interview with Katie Couric. Throughout the interview, Palin struggled with her answers, which often came across as incoherent and unclear. This led to widespread criticism and made her a national laughingstock. The interview was so infamous that it became a source of comedy on Saturday Night Live, where Tina Fey parodied Palin's responses using her exact words. This portrayal by Faye further highlighted Palin's struggles with the media and public perception. Number 10, Jean Chrétien. You will definitely laugh at this one. Former Canadian Prime Minister Jean Chrétien famously quipped, a proof is a proof. This statement, while grammatically peculiar, was part of Chrétien's unique style of speaking and sense of humor. It became a memorable quote, often used to illustrate his sometimes unconventional way of expressing ideas. I mean, if he says, a proof is a proof, then a proof is a proof. Number 11, Michelle Rodriguez. Michelle Rodriguez found herself in hot water after an impromptu run-in with TMZ. They caught her off guard with a question about a rumor circulating online to replace Ryan Reynolds as the new Green Lantern. Instead of just dismissing the rumor, Rodriguez made a comment that stirred up quite a bit of controversy. She said that minority actors shouldn't be vying for traditionally white superhero roles, which didn't sit well with a lot of people. This was especially awkward timing since Michael B. Jordan had already been cast as Johnny Storm in the new Fantastic Four. His casting was a major step forward for diversity in Hollywood, so Rodriguez's remark seemed to undermine that progress. Fans and advocates for more inclusive casting were understandably upset. They felt her comments were counterproductive, especially in an industry that's been slowly but surely moving toward more representation. After the backlash, Rodriguez realized she needed to address the situation. She posted an apology video to clarify what she meant. In her apology, she explained that her intention was to encourage the creation of new original characters for minority actors rather than changing the race of existing ones. While some appreciated her clarification, others still felt her initial comments had missed the mark. I mean, she had to do some damage control, right? Number. 12, Tom Hiddleston. Let's talk about that time Tom Hiddleston had a bit of a foot-in-mouth moment at the Golden Globes. Well, he won the Best Actor in a Miniseries or Television Film Award for his role in The Night Manager. Instead of sticking to the usual thank yous, he decided to share a story that didn't quite land as he hoped. During his acceptance speech, Hiddleston started talking about his time in South Sudan, where he met some medics from Médecins Sans Frontières, aka Doctors Without Borders. These medics told him they enjoyed watching the night manager as a bit of escapism from their challenging work. Hiddleston clearly wanted to shine a light on the incredible work these medics do, but his speech came off as self-congratulatory, making it sound like he was patting himself on the back for entertaining them rather than focusing on their heroic efforts. The audience and viewers cringed a bit, feeling he missed the mark. 
What should have been a heartfelt acknowledgement turned into a bit of a PR hiccup. Realizing the backlash, Hiddleston quickly issued an apology, explaining that he was nervous and didn't express his thoughts as intended. He said that his goal was to honor the medic's bravery and commitment, not to brag about his show's impact. Number 13. Pete Davidson Mental health is always a tricky subject to handle, and Pete Davidson showed us exactly how not to handle it during an infamous Saturday Night Live sketch. The comedian, known for his edgy humor and candidness about his own struggles with borderline personality disorder, decided to take a jab at NBA star Kevin Love. Love had bravely opened up about experiencing a panic attack during a game in an article for the Players' Tribune. Instead of acknowledging Love's courage in sharing his story, Davidson chose to mock the situation. He trivialized Love's panic attack and suggested that only certain people, presumably those with more severe or long-standing issues, should talk about mental health. It was an odd, elitist take that seemed to undermine the very message of openness and support that's crucial in discussions about mental health. Davidson's comments sparked a backlash, as many felt he had missed the point entirely. Mental health struggles don't have a hierarchy, and every story shared can help break down stigma and encourage others to seek help. And by mocking love, Davidson came across as dismissive of others' experiences and the importance of mental health awareness for everyone, not just those with a diagnosed condition. Number 14. Mitt Romney, 2012 during the second presidential debate in 2012, Mitt Romney and Barack Obama were asked how they would address gender pay inequality. Romney's response included a now famous comment about having binders full of women when he was looking for cabinet members. He was referring to resumes of qualified women, but the phrasing came off as awkward and disrespectful. The comment quickly became a media sensation, leading to criticism and a flood of memes. Many people felt it was demeaning and highlighted issues of sexism. This gaffe brought women's rights to the forefront of the election, making it a topic of discussion for the rest. These days, sounding sexist is like the ultimate faux pas, right? We've come a long way in recognizing the importance of equality and ditching outdated attitudes. So the last thing you want is to come off as sexist with your words or actions. Number 15, Raven Simone. Sometimes celebrities say things that make us cringe, and Raven Simonet's comment on The View about ethnic names definitely fits that bill. Known for her role in Disney's That's So Raven, she made an offhand remark implying there should be limits to what names are acceptable, using the example of Watermelon Drea. She even suggested, albeit jokingly, that she would support workplace discrimination based on a name like that. This comment didn't sit well with viewers. It was seen as insulting and perpetuating harmful stereotypes. Stereotypes. The backlash was swift and intense, leading both Raven Simonet and her father to issue apologies on Facebook. They tried to clarify that the comment was meant as a joke, but the damage was done. Many people felt that joking about such a sensitive topic, especially on a platform like The View, was in poor taste and reinforced negative biases. Number 16. Kathy Lee Gifford Celebrity blunders can often be a source of amusement, but sometimes they are just plain heartbreaking. Take the incident involving Kathy Lee Gifford on NBC's Today Show, for example. During an interview with Martin Short, who was there to promote Madagascar 3, Gifford made a painfully awkward mistake. Unaware that Short's wife had passed away in 2010, she began talking about his marriage, saying, but you're still, like, in love. In an incredible display of grace and composure, Martin Short played along, smiling and responding politely, despite the obvious emotional pain the question must have caused. It wasn't until later that Gifford realized her mistake. She was mortified and quickly sent out an apology tweet expressing her regret for the oversight. Martin Short, ever the gentleman, accepted her apology and assured everyone there were no hard feelings. Number 17. Tara Reid Sometimes, celebrity interviews go south, and Tara Reid's appearance on Shark After Dark is a prime example. Riding the wave of popularity from her role in Sharknado, Reid decided to brush up on her marine biology knowledge to avoid any embarrassing blunders. However, despite her good intentions, the actress ended up delivering a hilariously awkward moment that left viewers cringing and laughing in equal measure. During the interview, Reed went on a rambling monologue about whale sharks, clearly confused about the creature's nature. In a bid to sound informed, she mixed up some basic facts. And her stream of consciousness concluded with the realization that no sharks and whales do not have sex. Well, what can I say? 
Number 18, Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton has had her fair share of memorable quotes, but one in particular stands out for its sheer lack of perspective. During an interview with Piers Morgan, Hilton and her mother, Kathy Hilton, were discussing the ups and downs of living in the spotlight. When the topic of privacy came up, Piers asked if sacrificing it was worth the fame. Paris, in a moment of self-pity, said, Everything bad that can happen to a person has happened to me. This statement left many people shaking their heads. While it's true that Hilton has faced her share of challenges and negative press, her claim seemed incredibly out of touch, especially when considering the real hardships faced by many people around the world. Her comment came across as naive and self-absorbed, suggesting a lack of awareness about the gravity of issues others might face. It's important to acknowledge that everyone's experiences and struggles are valid. The problem with this was that it sort of showed us the bubble that many celebrities live in, where their personal dramas can feel like the end of the world, while many people are dealing with far more serious issues on a daily basis. Number 19. Kelly Osborne. Sometimes even well-meaning remarks can go disastrously wrong. And Kelly Osborne provided a textbook example during an appearance on The View. Attempting to criticize Donald Trump's stance on immigration, Osborne ended up making a comment that was unintentionally racist and highly offensive. She said, if you kick every Latino out of this country, then who is going to be cleaning your toilets, Donald Trump? And you all would expect. The backlash was immediate and intense. Co-host Rosie Perez quickly called her out, stating the problematic nature of her statement. Osborne seemed to realize her mistake almost instantly and tried to backtrack, but the damage was done. Once you say it on TV, you cannot take it back. Her comment basically reinforced a harmful stereotype and reduced an entire community to just one demeaning role. Not cool, right? And here's the thing right. She got slammed by the public for it. And for all the right reasons. What made it even worse was that just a few months earlier, she was calling out Juliana Rancic for making a similar insensitive comment. Talk about awkward. To her credit, though, Osborne owned up to her mistake. She took to Facebook to apologize and admit she messed up. But the damage was done. Number 20, Karl Rove. In 2007, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff Karl Rove had an unforgettable moment at the Radio and Television Correspondents Association dinner. He took to the stage for a dance and rap performance under the moniker MC Rove. The performance was nothing short of mortifying. Rove awkwardly bounced around on stage, using a deep voice and his cell phone as a prop. His attempt at rapping and dancing caused immense second-hand embarrassment for viewers. The whole scene felt like something out of a cringe-worthy comedy show, leaving many wondering what he was thinking. Number 21. Silvio Berlusconi So, back in 2009, Italy's ex-Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi stirred up some drama at a NATO summit. He rolls up to the summit, sees Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel, gives her a little wave, and then BAM! He ditches her to take a phone call. Meanwhile, Merkel's just standing there, probably feeling pretty awkward, waiting for Berlusconi to finish up his chat. After a few uncomfortable minutes, she's like, okay, I guess we'll start without him. Turns out the call was supposedly with the Turkish prime minister, so it was kind of important. But still, Berlusconi's whole phone call over politeness move didn't sit well with Merkel or anyone else at the summit. It was seen as pretty rude and disrespectful, not to mention a major breach of summit protocol. Number 22, Kanye West. Kanye West is no stranger to controversy, but his 2018 comment about slavery might be his most shocking yet. Known for a string of headline-grabbing moments, from interrupting Taylor Swift's VMA speech to declaring George Bush doesn't care about black people, Kanye has often blurred the line between genius and erratic behavior, but his statement that slavery for 400 years sounds like a choice during an interview with TMZ left many stunned and outraged. It's the worst thing that you can do, and as it should be, the backlash was immediate. Many people were deeply offended by the implication that the brutal history of slavery was somehow a decision made by the enslaved. It was a gross oversimplification and distortion of a complex and painful history. Kanye's attempt to clarify his point, that he was trying to discuss the mental bondage and systemic oppression that still affects people today, was lost in the overwhelmingly negative reaction to his initial remark. The controversy didn't stop there. Kanye doubled down on his weird behavior with a highly publicized, awkward meeting with President Donald Trump where he continued to spout off-the-wall statements.
Number 23, Kim Kardashian. Pranks might be fun, but you should really not pull off one on live TV. During an interview, Ellen pranked Kim Kardashian by bringing out a fake spider. Kim, who has a known fear of spiders, was visibly terrified and left the stage in fear. And you can imagine what happened next. Number 24, Katy Perry. Sometimes you don't know whether you should laugh at something or just cry. At the 2008 Latin Awards, Katy Perry was performing and jumped on a cake on stage as part of her act. But she slipped and fell multiple times while trying to maintain her balance on the cake. Despite the mishap, Katy Perry continued with her performance, which was very brave of her. Number 25, Wendy Williams and Dua Lipa. This one will make you pull out your hair. During a segment on her talk show, Wendy Williams mispronounced Dua Lipa's name as Dula Pipa. This mispronunciation caused some confusion and amusement among her audience, as Dua Lipa's name is quite well known in the entertainment industry. I mean, the least you can do is do some research. And there you have it, guys. Those were some of the most embarrassing fails caught on live TV. From politicians to celebrities, no one is immune to those cringe-worthy moments. Which one was your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more entertaining content like this, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.